I'm Damon Zell, and it's time for your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we'll be diving into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button and ring that bell, then you too can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. There's a correction from last week's Citadel Bonanza episode. First, I stated that during one of the fights that Void was wiped, they reshipped, they won the grid but ultimately lost the Citadel. Well, after reviewing the footage, which wasn't available before the episode, uh, this is not the case. I was told this information originally by Southern Coalition sources, and that's what I reported to you. The second correction is of the Warp Citadel kill, where I stated that Pantheon Tornadoes had won the day. Well, turns out, they weren't even there. To be fair, regardless of everything I got going on, with so many battles and kills last week, it was hard placing everything in the right fights. But you can't really do this accurately when chasing down the information and no after action reports are made readily available to me. I want to bring you guys accurate information, but I can only report on what's told to me. On a more personal note, to anyone I've ever squared off with in the past, you know who you are. Don't hold a grudge. I certainly don't. If I reported on false information, since day one, you bring forward information that counters what has been reported and shows that I've been in error, I have always corrected that in the following video. Most of the old arguments from the past were mostly based on kill numbers, but again, no kill board equals no accurate numbers from back then. You want your victories known, your news put out there, then come to me and I'm more than happy to report on it. I'm here to have fun and report on what happens. I do not have, nor have I ever had, a personal agenda to slander any one corporation or alliance. And now my son update. Unfortunately, he has had several more episodes. And um, we're on track right now for him to come home on Tuesday. He hasn't had any episodes in the last three days, knock on wood. He is doing good. He is eating a ton. The nurses are all impressed by his progress. When he does come home, he will be coming home on a apnea monitor. Uh, just in case he has any more episodes at home, uh, this machine will be able to save that information and it will be sent right to his doctors. But again, everything is looking good. And uh, we are very excited to have him home on Tuesday. As we look at the Sovereignty Report, this week's map does reflect the heavy losses suffered by the Southern Coalition, removing many solve points from the map. As always, this map is from the 17th to the 24th. For up-to-date maps, please visit Xscale's GitHub for daily updates. A link will be below in the description. Alright, this week we see Warp losing one system. Catch-22 gains two system. The Providence Coalition loses one system. Pantheon gains one system while losing two systems with a caveat. That being that these systems were held by corps that joined into Pantheon and left the stations to move into Fountain. The two citadels were taken down by Providence locals. Void loses one system. The Golden Horde loses three systems and gains one system. Win by Virtue loses five systems. The Silent Federation gains one system, and the QC loses one system. Y'all remember that day on the official Twitter that they put out that picture of the Gila, but it was a MOA? Well, they're at it again this week with a new skin. Let me introduce you to the Dawn Vexer. Now, take a look at it. That's a thick Vexer, let me tell you. Either that or this skin has a hidden ability to turn your cruiser into a battleship. A uh, little more due diligence, please. This week's Plex market report. Plex over the last week has seemed to stabilize between 1.4 and 1.5 million per Plex. And the overall price of ships has seemingly settled. After the massive offensive led by the Allied forces against the Southern Coalition last week, the Golden Horde suffered a curveball of a loss this week. The Corp OZ, who is the owner of the Golden Horde Solve Point, 
placed a few weeks ago within Esoteria, has broken off from the Horde to join Genesis. This gives Genesis a soft point on the map now and places the Horde in a lose-lose scenario of removing it. Not unlike what Pantheon had done to the Terran Federation last year by stealing a station and placing it within their space. The Horde now will have to either let the soft point stand, giving Genesis a point on the map, or removing it, and thus be blowing up their own citadel. Whatever they decide, it's a win-win for the Genesis forces. I reached out to the OZ leadership to find out what prompted the switching of allegiances. They responded with, We decided to leave the Golden Horde for Genesis because of a clash of ideologies. As ex-hardcore gamers, co-founder Jacobian and I met on day one of the game's launch, and we founded Oz under the mission statement of taking the game seriously, but not so much that it becomes like a second job. We all play Echoes as a means of escape from the real world, and we wanted to provide a place where players didn't feel pressured into certain roles or playstyles. As this relates to the Citadel in WX, not long after Oz joined the Golden Horde, there were shifts in the direction and vision of the leadership, and we found ourselves at odds in the sense that demands were made of Oz members that directly conflicted with our mission statement. As a casual corporation, we were accused of being largely useless members of the Horde, as we were not able to field significant numbers in fleet actions. When the idea to drop a Citadel in WX was put forth, we saw it as an opportunity to make a tangible public statement about the usefulness of casual corporations. My officers and I wanted to show the Golden Horde that the casual industrial corporations can be, and are, useful in a null alliance, so we offered to be the ones to plant the Golden Horde's flag in enemy territory. After the fleeting glory of the Citadel drop faded, however, nothing changed as far as the leadership's view of the casual and smaller corporations in the Horde and we began to feel the pressure again. Our decision to join Genesis was sparked by Silent Rambo's interview with Mamasaurus Rex, in which he talked about her perspective on the war. As a result, we reached out to her, and we found that our vision for Oz was nearly identical to her vision for Genesis, to provide a place where players can play at their own pace, without feeling pressure to meet demands to make them worthy of being in the Alliance. Fostering a healthy community is what gives an online game longevity, because this approach has individual players in mind first and not the alliances. So that's why we switched sides, although there were some heated discussions with regards to the leadership decisions and ideologies, we bear no ill will towards anyone in the Golden Horde. At the end of the day, EVE Echoes is just a game, but lessons about real life leadership can be learned. Alliance communities exist because of the players in them, so an alliance would do well to serve and benefit its members' base, and not the other way around. We all want to win. We all may have different opinions on how to accomplish that, but we also want to make sure the game survives a long time, and that starts with fostering a healthy community. So far, we've received a warm welcome from Genesis Federation, and we can already see a world of difference in how its individual members are treated. Each individual player is valued to the Lions, simply because logging in and playing, they are participating in the Echoes community. As far as the war is concerned, we didn't leave Golden Horde just to be on the team that is currently winning. When the dust settles, the way an Alliance views its members, it's what counts. Are they pieces in the mosaic, or are they pawns? I'm sure that, like all of us, Genesis Federation has its flaws, but win or lose, we could not have asked for a more friendly and welcoming group of people to play with. I followed this up with the question, being now on both sides of this war, what is your view looking back on the Golden Horde? Are they fighting this war wrong? They answer back, from a tactical standpoint, no. Golden Horde has some amazing FCs, very intelligent admirals, and excellent line pilots. However, I think that the hemorrhage of players they seem to be having in the last week is directly related to the incessant drama and overall failure to make individual pilots and smaller corporations feel valued. The key to fielding larger numbers and building morale is not to create more policies and tighten the grip of leadership, but to create an environment that players desire to log into every night. Players will stick around, even if they lose, if they love the community they're playing with. Creating such a community is easier said than done, and not something easily outlined or explained.
Evil Darkness was tight-lipped and sparse last week, but placed an announcement detailing his absence to the counter several points made by their enemies. He first goes into future plans as he announces the joining of Band of Brothers into the Horde. He then addresses that the SVC has painted him as alienating allies and backstabbing them by announcing that the Horde will work ever closer with Void and Han as they bring online a joint coalition server. They are working on ways to break down the language and cultural barrier between ACR and themselves for better coordination. At this time, I have learned that the Joint Coalition server that is online has been infiltrated by Allied spies. He also addresses the terms laid out for peace and quotes Void saying that under the terms laid out, there can be no peace as they would have to turn their backs on their allies in ACR. He goes into disputing supporting botting alliances, backstabbing allies, as well as calling out the SVC for acting out of greed and ambition. The Southern Coalition mobilized on Friday to take down a Pantheon Citadel in CX-8 Tech 6K, whose structure timer was coming up. The Southern Coalition, between the Golden Horde, Void, ACR, and OG, amassed a fleet of around 530 to hit the structure, but by the time they mobilized, Allied forces fielded upwards 700 pilots to defend. But don't let these numbers fool you. Both fleets were split and faced near equal numbers. The main fleet of 350 Void, OG, and Golden Horde were a system away from the target, with 400 Pantheon dis defending that system. The ACR fleet of 200 was blocked by a Genesis fleet of equal numbers. Both fleets could have taken the fight, but Southern Coalition leadership thought it prudent to retreat while the timer on the Citadel ticked away with only a minute 30 left before repairing. However, while deciding to make the move on the timer or not, they did kill two Nightmares, both for 18.9 billion each. Later that evening, Pantheon engaged in a brilliant industrial attack against the Southern Coalition. A fleet of 120 consisting of battleships, battle cruisers, cruisers, and eight retrievers system hopped, mining out six condensed belts behind enemy lines. A 70 pilot fleet responded to the incursion and engaged the enemy fleet. However, they were wiped out by the Pantheon force. After that brief engagement, Pantheon met little to no resistance as they finished their op and re returned home. These setbacks are seemingly taking a toll upon the southern forces, as it was learned several corporations have left the Horde and has planned to join Genesis. The Hordes in question are SPL, TOMX, Loot, NNC which owns a SOV bearing citadel, TFX another SOV citadel owned, and CO2. One could theorize that Genesis might win this war by attrition if more corps splinter off to join the Federation. New elections were held the other day within the Horde, which might breathe new life into this war. However, they will have to do so without their main diplomat, as Kaowen has stepped down from her post and was unavailable for comment. The fighting in the North continues between the Silent Federation and Fireflies as another outpost falls. I am told that earlier this week, Fireflies had an unsuccessful push into Declan, but were forced off-grid, however not before claiming two silent nightmares. Nodes Please Stop finished a contract against the Horde this week, and in 7 days they claimed 727 ships, for a grand ISK total of 402 billion in ISK. A link to that KillMail spreadsheet can be found below in the description, however even while under contract, they still find time to frolic as Black Legion brawled against the Silent and Friends in E-Tech FICO 60 v 60. This happened as Silent Forces were on a CTA defending a Citadel timer. The gate was bubbled, but the Black Legion jumped into the system and immediately took the fight to them. The battle lasted around 15 minutes, but at the end the Silent Fleet was all but wiped out, with the Legion only losing two frigates. A link to the video will be in the description below. Since we're talking Mercenary Alliances, I looked back into the OG of the Merc Alliances, the Mercenary Coalition, to find out the state of affairs these days. I was given a statement approved by the MC leadership. Rumors of the MC's death are unfounded. We prefer to remain professional in our standards and rarely engage in the low effort propaganda commonly found on the external social media websites. We believe actions speak louder than memes and our most recent actions make our intentions clear. You pay, we kill. To the rest of New Eden, 
we would like to announce that the MC is looking to expand. If you are looking to join a professional mercenary alliance that will pay you per kill, then come join the Mercenary Coalition. We have openings for both individual pilots looking for a corp, or CEOs interested in PPK contracts and deep null industrial operations. On the other side of New Eden, Catch-22 got lucky this week on a random roam as they employ one of the oldest tricks of the trade by inviting a random pilot in the system to a fleet. The pilot accepted the invite, which gave Catch-22 the warp-in to a warp outpost. The result of that mistake is the loss of five ships and a 3.8 billion outpost. I'm reviving an old tradition on this show, the Alliance or Corporation Spotlight. This week we spotlight the Pale Horse Pirating Company, which is a PvP corporation that delivers bespoken mercenary and privateering solutions to clients across New Eden. Did someone steal your corp and run? Do you want to deny your enemies the use of their anomalies, transportation pipelines, and belts for extended periods of time? PHPC is here. Comprised of a tightly knit community of pilots, Pale Horse prides itself in being able to offer highly competitive ISK making opportunities, free ships, and SRP to its members, enabling them to spend 100% of their time PVPing and getting paid daily from bounty rewards. Interested in joining but you don't want to leave your corp to do so? No problem. Come contract for them. With no obligations to stay, with the same daily pay per kill program, you can experience the mercenary life obligation free. For those interested in joining, PHPC is offering a 100 million ISK bonus and up to a free T8 battlecruiser hull so you can start making ISK right away. Join the ranks of their elite PVPers, experience the life of no obligations except doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, and without any taxes. Fly with PHPC. If you are interested in learning more about their services, or would like to explore joining PHPC as a recruit or contractor, please re reach out to Goodspace number 1419 on Discord. And now we come to the big kills of the week. And this week I've seen a large uptick in the battleship submissions, and because the average battleship is between 1 to 3 billion, I'm going to start omitting them to keep this to spotlight those truly big kills of the week. Catch-22 starts us off this week with several battleship kills, averaging between 1 to 3 billion, but they had two gems in the form of phantasm kills, one for 3.1 billion and the other for 3.7 billion. The Mercenary Coalition scores this 15.7 billion rattlesnake kill, as well as this 3.5 billion void Terra with an outpost drop. The OG splashes this week with a 13.3 billion Vindicator kill, a 14 billion Rattlesnake kill, twin Macarials, one for 8.9 billion and the other for 9 billion, and a small Dami for 1.8 billion. The No Alliance Mimo Corp nabs a 2.5 billion Raven and this 3 billion Naga 2. As always, if your corporation or lines have some truly big kills they want shown on this show, just send them to me on Discord, let me know the, the corp and alliance they belong to, and make sure they weren't in some large fleet action like a big battle that would be covered normally on this show. These are just your standalone happen chance kills or roam kills that are truly magnificent. It's time for everyone's favorite, the solo kills of the week, and a chance at a free Omega combo. First, an honorable mention for Badran, who is still waiting his 30 day cooldown to be eligible again, but I wanted to showcase this 2 billion Vigilant kill. And yes guys, it looks like he did make the show. Alright, we have Dark Knight V01 with a 1.191 billion Retriever kill. We have Oromat. 1988 with a 1.218 draw meal kill. Flaming Fish has a 1.264 billion Drake kill. Miller Zero with a 1.325 billion draw meal kill. We have Easily with a 2 billion Naga kill. Epironi with a 2.2 billion tornado kill. 
Reaper of Twice catches a 2.4 billion Vigilant. And Prisniak Lugan catches a 3.2 billion Phantasm Kill. But the winner of this week's Omega Combo goes to Third Eyes with this incredible 9.1 billion Interceptor Kill. Talk about a payday. Look at all that Sancho Wreck that has fallen. Well, Third, you know what to do. Hit me up on Discord so we can arrange to get that prize out to you. This episode has been Kylo Ren Honk Certified. But, if you need more news in your life, go on over and check out the Echoes of New Eden podcast with Rambo, where he showcases a bunch of other stories that happen throughout New Eden, as well as interviews with influential players, corporation owners, alliance leaders, and FCs. Alright everyone, you have a great week. Fly safe, and remember, we are always one vision, one purpose, one front.